Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today for a uh, get ready with me, chatty get ready with me. Uh, I'm actually getting ready to film a review. I am planning on doing a review of Inglot gel liners because over the past couple of years they've pretty much been the main liners that I use. Uh, where did that one go? I found it. All right, so I thought it'd be fun to um, film my makeup while doing this because uh, when I do this review, I can always refer back to it being like, look, it applies this way, check out the video. But the main reason being is because I mainly have colored. I've got black and then I've got various colors. I've got various purples, I've got various blues, teals, I've got an orange, I've got a burgundy, I've got a pink. Uh, so what I thought I'll do, which I haven't ever done before, but I thought this video was calling for it, is attempt to do like a rainbow or multiple color liner. Like I don't have every color in the rainbow, so I'm just gonna pick like a gradient of maybe like four or five shades and try to do like different colored liner. So that's sort of why I thought I'd film this because if it turns out well, people will probably wanna see how I did it. And if it turns out badly, then we can all laugh together. All right, so what I've done is I put a question or I reached out for questions or topics to talk about uh, in the community tab of my channel and you guys came through. I posted this less than an hour ago and I've already got 30 comments. So I'm gonna try to cover as many of them as possible. Um, but yeah, thank you to everyone that did um, leave questions or topics to talk about. It really helps me with these videos. Um, and what I'll do as well is, oh, <laughs> I just saw one that I thought was coming. I can see it. I might address that one first. Um, but what I'll do as well, instead of reading out names and whatnot, um, I will leave the question on the screen so you can it makes it quicker. Anyway, uh, what I'll start with doing is my base. Um, and I recently purchased one of the Smashbox. Uh, this is the Photo Finish Serene Greens Primer Water. So this is a limited edition um, scented versions. I also got the citrus one. Uh, yeah, I've been buying stuff. We'll discuss that. Someone asked about the low buy. Uh -huh. um, anyway, I'm going to use this. This one is, um, it definitely smells like, I find that, um, uh, Green scented things often in skincare smell a little bit like cucumber and melon. So it's a bit of a sweeter green scent. Uh, this one is just like you've put cucumbers in water. So if you don't have any issues with that, you'll like this. If you like a real true, uh, almost savory green, you'll like this. But I like the idea of it because um, at the moment, I'm going against the sort of like mattifying primers because my skin is actually pretty dry. Not dry, that's a lie. It's not dry at all. It's normal. For me, that is dry because I'm quite oily and in this sort of cooler weather, it's very cold. Um, my skin is getting drier, so I, I like a bit of hydration. So before I read out the first question, um, I am going to just explain roughly what I'm going to put on my face so you guys can understand. Um, I am just sort of using the products that I am sort of rotating at the moment or using at the moment, whether they're new things that I've bought or I've come across with PR or if they're Project Pan stuff. Most stuff is Project Pan stuff. Um, but I went to the launch of the Innisfree Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia launch. So Innisfree is a Korean brand. It's very, very well known and it, they now opened a store in Melbourne. So in Melbourne Central, we have a store with over 600 items. So this is the um, Skinny Cover Fit Cushion Foundation. My shade is light beige. This one is a little bit too light for me, so I'll bronze it up, but um, I've sort of been getting into cushion foundations. I've got a matte one from Shuramura that I, mwah, I love, uh, and I might actually do a wear test on that. Um, but yeah, I'll, I've been wearing them a lot lately, so I thought, Makes sense if I use it. Um, I'm going to use that with a sponge because it comes with a sponge, but I find I can wash these more easily. So I use a sponge. And then also I'm thinking of including this It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye uh, Illumination Full Cover Anti-Aging Waterproof Concealer in medium. I'm thinking of putting that in my project pan for winter. So I'm going to, I'm testing it out to see how it goes. So I'm putting all this on and then I'm setting it with uh, my fave Too Faced uh, uh, Peach Perfect Translucent Mattifying Loose Setting Powder. It's not translucent, but Mattifying Loose Setting Powder. I love that powder. 
it's so good um, it does set the makeup it does keep it a little bit matte but not drying matte so it sort of works well with all these sort of like semi hydrating things that I'm using so that's what I'm doing products will be listed down below but let's get to answering stuff so I wanted to mention this one uh, straight away because this is very topical um, and I look a few people have asked us to talk about it on beauty news and we didn't want to rant about it on beauty news because I don't think it's really like we're trying to stay away from all the drama okay the questions from Caitlin and she asked a few questions but the one that stands out to me is what are your thoughts on the Kat Von D vaccine situation? Now, if you aren't familiar, um, Kat Von D has come out to say that she's not going to vaccinate her child when it's born. Um, and she's talking about it, vaccines not being vegan and not being proven safe and all that kind of bullshit. Um, and I want to come out and say that that is absolute fucking bullshit. By the way, this is what the compact looks like. So vaccines are very, very important. Even if they're not vegan, the only time someone should not get vaccinated is if they are allergic to what's inside the vaccine um, and it will cause them harm being vaccinated. I'm just doing this. It's really easy. Um, there's a thing called uh, herd immunization. Told you it's a bit light, but I'll sort it out. Um, and pretty much the way it works is that I think it's something like if 80% of the population or 90% of the population is immunized, it protects the rest that are vulnerable. So for example, you think of something like smallpox. If someone's allergic to a smallpox vac uh, vaccine, they are in the minority that is still protected because the rest of people are immunized so that's the whole point of vaccinations yeah i love vaccines to the point i think they're they're so brilliant and they've what pretty much wiped out a lot of um problems in our society um and people like kat von d are absolutely I, I feel like they're really dangerous and they might say like oh it's not proven yes it's proven where is it not proven that vaccines work like do you have polio? Yeah, I, I think she's she's very dangerous. And I find it funny as well because she came out to say this because a lot of people were telling her how to raise her kid or do whatever. And she's saying, um, I don't want unsolicited advice. But then she goes and tells people what she's doing. And, you know, and I think what she doesn't realize is that that has a influence on a lot of people who aren't as well educated about vaccinations um, or what vaccines do. And I think that is... Um, it's very problematic and it's very dangerous. So yeah, even if she chose not to immunize her child and not tell people about it, that is still dangerous to society because it compromises herd immunity. But at the same time, her publicizing it to millions of people is way more damaging and it really concerns me. So I am not for that. I am very, very anti that. I'm a big fan of getting vaccinations. Uh, I, as an adult, I go get vaccinated against things because it's the responsible thing to do. Vaccinations bring it on. I like to say as well, Haley got the hep C one, I think, the other day, and I got it like about 10 years ago. And I was saying, she's like, oh, it really hurt. And I'm like, yeah, but now you're a superhero. You are immune to hep C or whatever it was. I'm like, go you good thing. It is a great thing to do. Fuck Kat Von D, fuck Kat Von D. Anyway, let's talk about this. So you can see, um, look, it's a little bit light for me, um, but I'll bronze it up. You can see the coverage is quite nice. If you want to build it up, look, you can. Um, I was always under the impression that with um, these kind of cushion foundations, that they are very light coverage because all the ones that I've used before have been very dewy and light coverage. But I've noticed a trend that a lot of brands these days are bringing out sort of better setting ones and more full coverage ones, which is what the Shiromura one is as well. So I feel like uh, Korean and Japanese brands, um, they now have like a dewy one and also like a long wearing sort of a uh, higher coverage one and that's what this one I believe is and it, it actually is really really nice a bit too fair on me what I also like to do is get one of these sort of brushes on a daily basis so this is just a Morphe M439 no affiliate code and I just tap it in and you buff it in and it gets less coverage but um, it looks really nice so I'm kind of digging these cushion foundations I didn't think I ever would but I've been 
converted to some of them not all of them some of them all right because that's so fair i'm going in with this concealer um which is quite fair and pink toned and it's very very high coverage i still have to be careful with this one because since the skin is not super super full coverage having a really full coverage uh concealer you've got to be a bit careful with it okay i've got a really fun one this is easy how did your cats come into your life well, um, I have had cats my whole life. I have had cats since I was brought home from the hospital. Um, we've never not had cats and we've always pretty much had two cats because my mum was under the idea that like, you don't wanna make, have a cat that's like lonely. So um, yeah, my whole life we've had cats. Actually, my dad still has a cat. Uh, her name's Paula um, and she, we got her in. 1999 so she is going on 18 years later this year she'll be 18 years old um, she's still going strong a little bit deaf but love and life so you know we're big on cats my family has always been big on cats we've been big on other pets as well but cats have been the thing that like my mum loves cats um and i would say that i'm not so you can see that this concealer is all of a sudden it's like almost overtaking this um foundation because it is a little bit full coverage also a tip have a towel on your lap i do this when i'm filming a lot of people think that i'm wiping um my fingers on my pants i'm not i've got a towel there um yeah i've always been we've always been like a pet family we love pets um and i'm not like a cat person over a dog person it's just that with my lifestyle it's sort of hard to have a dog i live in an apartment i don't think it's fair um, and also I don't like have enough time to sort of like walk it enough. So I always thought for me, cats just work better in my lifestyle. So I've sort of gone with that, but I also like rabbits. I like fish. I like rats. I like everything. The concealer is very obvious compared to my, hopefully it doesn't read on camera too badly, but I can definitely see the concealer versus the rest of me. Oh well. Um, but so my particular cats, um, we got Dirtles. Her name's Dudley, but like we call her Dirtles. So it's sort of like Turtles, Dirtles, um, which was just a gradual progression from Dudley to Duds to Dirds to Dirtles. So that's how her nickname sort of progressed and it has stayed that way. But I got her from the Cat Protection Society. I saw a post on Facebook that my friend's uncle's cat had a litter and they were wanting to get rid of them and um, they were going to take them to the council. And before they did that, they are like, if anyone wants them, come pick them up. And so I inquired and picked one up um but i didn't realize they were as young as they were um he said that they were around um i think five weeks old but i feel like he, they were really young um because he had to be hand fed for two weeks so um yeah that's my baby and that's why he's the baby because we got him when he was little baby um but yeah we've since like got all his vaccines and desexed and all that kind of stuff so we're very responsible with the baby but my cats love each other. They're currently on the couch making out. They just clean each other. They love each other. All right, this is what I'm talking about. The cats love each other. There's two beds here, but they're together. Oh, turtles. Boogie. Hello, beautiful boy. You sleepy? Oh, yawny boy. Big yawn. Good work, buddy. Good work, buddy. Cheeky boy. Oh, this is a really interesting question. Um, so I don't know if this is a boring one, but I've always wondered how tax works when you're a YouTuber. Uh, well, tax works j like tax works. Um, so since we're our own employers, I guess, um, we sort of operate as sole traders. Um, and what I do is when I get paid, I hold, I have a different account that I hold a certain amount um, for tax. By the way, I'm going in with my Thin Lizzy powder. This is part of my project pan. Um, so I just transfer a certain amount um, that I will sort of like overestimate what I think I might be taxed. So I always have enough um, and I just keep that. And then at tax time, I have to pay tax. So um, yeah, it's like any sort of um, sole trader or 
you know, individual that works for themselves, they have to hold their own tax and then when they do their taxes at the end of tax time, uh, instead of getting taxed back, they get a tax bill. And then you just hope that you've put aside enough money uh, to cover that. So yes, we do pay taxes. So I'm just going heavy handed with this bronzer because I need to use it up by next month and I'm struggling. And also my face is very fair from that foundation. So good pair, good, good pair encourages me to use a lot of bronzer. Um, but yeah, if you had a small channel um, and you were worried about tax, um, you'd probably talk to your accountant if you've got one. But otherwise, if you're not earning much money, um, it would probably be under the threshold uh, for it to be actually just a hobby rather than an income so I wouldn't worry too much about it um, if it was yeah if it wasn't for Beauty News being a bigger channel um, and it actually being sort of my income then uh, yeah you, you wouldn't have to worry too much about it but yeah if you do earn a bit of money from YouTube talk to your accountant Ooh, we've got a question from Montana if you could have a drag race queen put you in drag which one would you choose um, I've got a real soft spot for Ben de la Creme. Uh, I don't like the, I didn't like how Dayla left in like All Stars last season. I thought that was a little bit of a cop out. I don't know, but I like her aesthetic. I like, um, she seems like a really cool person. So I would have to say off the top of my head, I'd say, um, Ben de la Creme, but I also like going back to, I love Nina flowers from season one. So, um, yeah, some of there's part of me that like the old school part of me that remember season one, um, when it actually was released, I watched that when it was released. I know it was just after high school, so it was a while ago. I'm 32 now. Um, but uh, yeah, I, also Nina Flowers is great. All right, I'm going in with my uh, blush from my Project Pan. This blush has not moved in two months. It is frustrating me, but I'll show you why. This is oh, Illa Masca Naked Rose. Gorgeous blush, but you literally just go and you've got enough. You even need to tap some off so it's very impossible to look how like and that's gorgeous amount like that's a gorgeous amount how can you use more when you physically can't use more because it looks crazy so um, yeah this is like an impossible blush to pan but it is a gorgeous blush and um, look I am even trying to put more on and I know I could use this on my eyes, but once again, I'm doing my uh, one month, one palette. So I don't want all my looks to be sort of um, muddied up with, uh, not muddied up, but like uh, have a blush in it because it doesn't reflect how I use the palette completely. But yeah, that's a lot of blush. And I literally used like maybe three taps. Yeah, difficult, but great value and great blush. Um, there's been a couple of questions about how Haley and I met and how we created Beauty News um, and uh, that's a common question we get a lot but you know I'm happy to go over it many times. Um, should I start doing my eyes or brows? Oh, well I discussed that I'm going in with my um, this is the Concrete Minerals Mineral Eyeshadow in Rocked. This is the most gorgeous highlighter and I use this a lot because I'm trying to pan it. Um, it's beautiful when I use it when I when I have eventually used it up, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to be very sad because it's gorgeous, but I feel like it is, I don't know. I need to start using my, using things up more. But um, yeah, if you've ever got like a light um, mineral eyeshadow that you don't really like, use it as a highlighter because check this shit out. But um, Haley and I uh, both had our channels before we met. So we met at a event, like a blogger, YouTuber event. Look how gorgeous that is. Um, and uh, we were sitting a couple of seats away from each other. And she came up to me after the event and was like, oh my God, I just want to say hi, I, I watch your channel. And I was like, oh, and um, it was at that time, I think she had just started her channel. Um, and so I was like, what's your channel? Follow you, da, 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 da. And also since like, we met a few people that day uh, that we all sort of became mutual friends with. Um, so we met Ken that day, um, you know, a few people like that. And I don't know, we just sort of, um, you know, especially when you're a smaller YouTuber, um, you like to meet people in the same field and live in the same kind of city as you because um, it's nice to make friends and have someone to talk to. It's a really weird industry that a lot of people might watch, but a lot of people don't 
um, understand what it's like to be a YouTuber. So, um, you know, sometimes you meet people and you're like, oh my God, let's be friends. Um, and I guess that's sort of what we did. And then we were friends for over a year before we started um, Beauty News. So um, that was, yeah, we're friends for over a year and we sort of caught it, caught up at events and whatnot. And then uh, we sort of got into the habit. She sort of lives sort of near where I work. So um, we would sometimes meet after I finished work and we would get, we'll go shopping or if there was a sale or something or go have a coffee or a wine. And um, we just, you know, started becoming friends. And also my hair is shit because I've put a treatment in it. So ignore the fact that it looks a bit wet because it is, um, but I'm treating myself. Um, yeah, so we, uh, so I pretty much came up with the idea of Beauty News because I was watching a lot of YouTube channels where they discuss like Philip Defran and Co, ETC show, uh, Screen Junkies, like where they talk amongst themselves about topics like internet news, I don't know, video games, movies, whatnot. Um, and I kind of thought, oh, I'd love a, I'd love one of these to be about beauty. And um, when I had that idea, I proposed it to Hayley because since we used to talk a lot about like new releases and stuff, I thought it was perfect. And uh, the, re the rest is history. That's how we started. Okay, Naz asked, what movie do you want to see next collabing uh, with a makeup brand? Also, which brand? All right, which brand do I think would do something good? I would like to see Lord of the Rings trilogy, not The Hobbit, but the Lord of the Rings trilogy pairing with something like, I don't want to say Besame, I do know that they do packaging really well, but I really love Bare Minerals as like the quality of their products. I would love to see a really cool um, Bare Minerals palette themed Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Is that weird? Um, with like really awesome packaging. Like maybe the map on the packaging and you open it up and it's got like maybe whether they're shades that reflect the characters or different areas or different um, chapters or whatever it is. I'd love something like that because I'm a bit of a nerd. Um, and then we also got a question which I thought was kind of cool. Um, Melissa asked, if you got the chance to collab with a brand to make a makeup product, would you do it? Uh, what would you want to make and which brands would you want it to be out of most? Okay, so I think the thing is that, um, all right, I'm gonna start doing rest of my makeup. I'm gonna do my brows while I'm talking about that. Okay, while I'm talking about this, let's do our brows. Uh, this is just the Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, brow powder duo, whatever it's called, in dark brown. I'm trying to pan the light side, as you can see. Um, so I use this every day. Um, look, see, the thing is, would you? The answer is yes, I would. Now, um, there are very few brands that I wouldn't consider considering doing um, a collab with, but I think the key thing about collabs and this is, I think, where you see like the failed collabs like Nikki Tutorials and whatnot with the Too Faced one. Um, I would always have a sort of stipulation in there that if I didn't like the outcome, that, that we could have to scrap it because I don't want to put my name on something or have my input on something that I didn't want to recommend to people that follow me or that I wouldn't recommend to my friends. So, um, yeah, I think I would definitely be happy to talk to people about a collab and most brands I would be happy to do. There's no real brands. Like, I don't think Jeffree Star will suit me. I don't think some brands will suit me. But um, I, overall, I, I know that all brands have some good elements to them. And I think that if you could have a lot of control over it. Like for example, I'm just looking at, I've got a Bobbi Brown lipstick on my table. I know that I like Bobbi Brown lipsticks and some of their products, but I know that their eyeshadows aren't very pigmented. Now, if I collabed with them and made an eyeshadow palette, my stipulation would be, we have to ramp up the pigmentation. And if you can't do it, I'm pulling the pin and I don't want to go ahead with it. So no matter what I do, it, there'd have to be a stipulation that if I am not happy with it, they have to take my name off it. Um, but I think, yeah, so most brands I would collab with, I think ColourPop would be fun to collab with because I really like their products overall. Um, and they've got such a diverse range of products that you can create like lipsticks, in, like lip glosses, you could do a whole bunch of stuff. But um, I know it's a bit cliche and I know a lot of people are doing this, but you know, an eyeshadow palette would be great. I love 
um, eyeshadow palettes and I feel like I could create something that, that is a little bit different. Um, probably something that a lot of people would be interested in and I think because we also follow trends a lot um, or what's being released in makeup, I sort of know what people would be happy to use and then also something that I would be happy to use. Like I wouldn't just put in a bright yellow just because it's currently trending. I would, you know, kind of want to, you know, do something that works with me, but also something that I think is a bit different that people would like. So yeah, I'd love to do an eyeshadow palette. When it comes to quality, I'd love to do it with Bare Minerals. Like I was just saying before, I think that they have some fantastic quality eyeshadows. But the problem with them is that their color choices these days are pretty bland and boring. But I know that they've got the ability to make awesome eyeshadows because I've got some in my collection that are amazing. So my first brand would be probably Bare Minerals that I'd want to collab with. But um, yeah, I would be open to hearing a lot unless it's a you know multi-level marketing brand or something like that. Um, I wouldn't be interested in. But um, yeah, there'd always have to be the stipulation of if I don't like it. I'm pulling the pin or you can still release it but take my name off it so that's sort of what um, yeah that's what I would want to do okay we've got a question from Krista can you give some advice on project panning oh I'm just using all my project panning stuff now I think project panning is great I think it gives you a good way to figure out how long it takes to use up products like I can use up a foundation in like a month six weeks so I know if I have like a graveyard of like eight foundations I don't feel too bad because I technically can use it up in a year whereas I know that with a blush for example it takes me a whole year to use up one blush so it stops me from wanting to buy more um, but my tip would be I, I personally like to pan a full face of makeup um, and a full face of makeup that's not sort of a uh, hard to use so everything that i've put on today except for my foundation because i've panned my foundations are pretty much project pan products sort of the powder's not but these could be project pan products and i could start my day like this every single day and then just change up the eyes and the lips so i find use products that you are happy to use every single day and you will use them up it's just it's just what it is a good foundation a good primer a good concealer a good powder a blush a bronzer a highlighter if you just and brow products mascara eyeliner you know if you are happy to wear this sort of like the same base every day and this is like your standard and then build on it you can pan all this stuff it's very very easy to do so um, when you start introducing things like i want to pan this bright red lipstick or i want to pan this teal eyeliner that's when it gets harder because using those products every single day it's it's hard to do so um, i find stick to basic products that you know you can easily use every day and it makes it easier as well because if you are going to work every day and you don't have to think about like i often keep my project pan things in like tubs like this and if you don't by the way this isn't project pan i'm just just got it in there but um if you've got a tub of stuff that you know creates a full face and you can you don't even have to think about what to use in your drawers um i find it's so much easier and quicker to do your makeup on a daily basis too so yeah just yeah 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 okay now i've got a question from nikki what are your favorite condiments do you hate mustard do you insist on real mayo um i love mustard and i love mayo but i think my favorite one is tomato sauce or what you'd call ketchup uh probably my favorite condiment um and then the serious questions do you follow politics do you practice religion do you have a favorite superhero i like the superhero one is a serious question um i sort of follow politics uh Darren did like studied politics and a lot of his friends talk about politics so I like to be aware of politics but I'm not like I don't I'm not really in it I keep up to date with what's happening but not to like a full-on extent um so yeah medium sort of uh do I pra practice a religion no I'm definitely an atheist um I yep yeah, no no um and a favorite superhero shit fuck what is that I find the problem with superheroes is that since like Marvel and you know the movies and stuff that are coming out um even if you had a favorite superhero in like the comic form uh it's sort of been revamped since 
um, the movies and now all I can think about is who do I like from the movies and I have to say recently I really like Thor because I really liked Thor Ragnarok um, I find him really funny and I know that's Taika Waititi doing some of that um, I find him very funny too so uh, I don't know I find that really hard uh, I did see Avengers I also liked Ant-Man only because I really, really like uh, Paul Rudd. He's one of my favorite actors. I don't know. See, they, they influence the actors and the movies now influence what I like as a superhero, which is, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. Okay, now we're getting to the hard part, which is going to be the eyes. I'm going to start really basic. I'm going to start with my MAC Paint Pot in Utterly Becoming. Project Pan product. And then I'm going in with this palette, which is my one month, one palette pro, uh, palette. Um, and I'm, oh, stop it, stop it you. Uh, I'm going to set my primer with this color. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, okay, let's hold it like this. Set it with this color, which is just the light cream shade. Uh, I might put that gold all over the lid because I want it to be pretty blank uh, for the colors. And then I might put this color in the crease. So that, that, and that, and that's what I'm, so what I'm going to be doing. Chantel asked, uh, I haven't heard you talk about this on either of your channels. What are the best places to visit in Australia slash Melbourne? Um, uh, tourism, food, best time of year, etc, etc. So she might come to Melbourne for work. Um, look, do you know what? I've actually discussed this with people and uh, where's a brush? What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? I actually find uh, locals are the worst people to ask about travel advice because most of the time um, they don't go traveling in their own city um, or do touristy stuff. So um, all I can say is, look, firstly, I love Melbourne. Um, so definitely if you're coming to Australia, you have to come to Melbourne. Um, but in regards to what to do while you're here, I think it's best to consult like travel websites because once again, sometimes like I remember I had a friend down from Japan last year and I was like, I don't know what to do. She took me on my first wine tour and we're quite known for having like, there's a few wine regions around here and I've never even been on a wine tour around here because it wasn't something that I ever thought of doing. So um, yeah, I think it's hard to ask locals where to go. I think it's easy to ask about weather and food and stuff like that because we, that's what we live. Um, but when it comes to what to do here, I have no freaking idea. I would say Sydney is really good for um, sort of the scenery um, but Melbourne is more to do with like the restaurants the art galleries the cafes down the laneways um, stuff like that so we are more of the uh, a fun city to sort of live in and explore um, but you're not gonna get like really awesome views and like scenery that you'll never see before because we're just a city so look I love Melbourne and I recommend coming here and checking out the art galleries and you know going to like maybe small cinemas and stuff like that that's what I tend to like about Melbourne um, little cafe cultures go to wine bars uh, stuff like that but I think definitely Melbourne is more the food um, rather than anything and the weather is just depending on what you like I personally think the sort of in-between seasons like um, early spring maybe late autumn is a good time because we can get very hot um, and then we can also get really rainy and cold. So it just depends on what you like. If you like bringing your jacket, getting your umbrella and your gum boots out and going for a wander down the laneways in the rain, Melbourne's great for you in winter or even, I guess spring is like that and sometimes even autumn. Yeah, but it's, it, I think, I think the best time are the, the more mild times. So uh, around spring, I think around autumn, like early autumn, where there's a bit of warmth, and there's a little bit of like overcast and a little bit of rain, but it's not too detrimental, if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, come to Australia, come to Melbourne. We're great. We've got good bars as well. So we, you know, we like drinking and eating. Okay, this is an interesting one. Uh, do you know exactly what your skin undertone is? Cause I get very confused with mine and we have similar pale skin. Okay, so uh, I, I do think it's a little bit confusing. Um, I'm just going in with that crease color now. I have quite, light skin. I'm not the fairest of fair. Um, I would say I'm just a standard light. I used to be quite tanned, believe it or not, uh, but now I don't go outside much. Um, but I would say that I, I like to think I'm a neutral um, because most eyeshadows and most lip products look good on my skin tone. I'm not too pink. I'm not too yellow. I would say that I'm sort of a neutral, but where I think I actually, like the way I sort of describe my skin to some people is I'm a very light 
olive so when I like if you look at my arms I'm not very very pink um, I'm more of a light olive so uh, if I'm tanned I'm quite a warm toned but if I'm fair I'm quite neutral so um, I do have sort of pink on my cheeks that comes through but besides that I like to think I'm a neutral I can use I can wear sort of um, cool toned reds and warm toned reds and then both be flattering which is a bit of a blessing so um, yeah there's that's where I can get away with a lot of colors. A lot of people are like, I don't know how you wear every single type of lipstick. It's because I've got neutral skin and it just goes with goes with everything. So yeah, I would say I'm a, like a light neutral. Okay, I'm gonna assume that this is a typo. If you had to choose warms in the cramps, I'm guessing crease, and cool tones on the lid, or cool tones in the crease and warm on the lid, um, well, I just went cool tone in the crease and warm on the lid, so I would prefer that one. Um, I don't often get along with self um, cool toned eyeshadows all over the lid so um, for me I would prefer like a bronzy kind of color all over the lid blend it out with like a purpley kind of berry shade or something so that's what I prefer I think that is a nice way to balance uh, warms and cools um, and I don't really love that look of the bright orange in the crease and then like a silver or something on the lid like it can look good but more often than not I would prefer um, yeah a warmer shade on the lid and like I've just done I've just put a gold on the lid um, and the kind of purple shade in the crease. That's definitely what I prefer to do. But I definitely like to go, like I definitely like to mix it up because I find all cool can look a bit much, whereas all warm can look a bit much too, whereas uh, changing what colors in the crease really does help um, neutralize it a bit. Okay, Anna Harper has asked, do you read, if so, what kind of books? Well, in my favorites, uh, just that I put up the other day, I was talking about how I'm reading a lot of Neil Gaiman at the moment. Um, I do, <laughs> I'm a bit funny, I do like sort of like fantasy sort of, sort of books. My mum reads a lot of factual books and I find that um, I don't really rela relax with that. Like you learn a lot, but I don't find it enjoyable. I like to read before I go to bed. Um, this is just that sort of champagne color again. Uh, so I like to read sort of nice like stories, stories that it's sort of like watching TV in bed, but you're not, you're reading a book. So I used to love reading when I was in high school, um, Stephen King. It's a good example. Um, I love at the moment, Neil Gaiman. I also really love uh, young adult fiction books. I haven't read one in a while, but uh, there was a couple of years ago where I think I read almost, I read so many like young adult fiction novels. Um, and if they had like more than a trilogy, I was, I loved it because I'd just go through them so quickly. So yeah, I kind of like that sort of light reading that is, um, I don't know, I like good stories. So I often like them to be a little bit far-fetched or supernatural or um, something like that, uh, a bit like Neil Gaiman's ones, which are like set in sort of like set, set in reality, but there's a lot of like fantasy to them. Uh, I really like that. I think it's it's good. I enjoy it. Okay, that's just some of that purple. All right, Carmen asked, what collection or brand are you most excited to come to Australia? On the flip side, what are you most disappointed that hasn't come to Australia? Well, definitely has been disappointed that it hasn't come is the Too Faced uh, Peaches and Cream collection because these products are bomb. They are so good. I think this is actually, I think I had another question about uh, my favorite foundation at the moment or something. And I'm gonna say my favorite foundation at the moment is this guy. Um, it is, it looks so good. It wears so well, as long as you don't need to like touch it up. It looks really good. So I'm very disappointed that this hasn't come to Australia. Oh, and also Tony Moly coming to Maya. So I'll talk about this again later, but um, Tony Moly, uh, the brand has come to Maya. You could buy them online and in some like specialty stores, but now they're in Maya and easy to get and um, I've been stocking up. So uh, yeah, I think I'm into sort of like in more like Korean um, makeup that is really innovative and good rather than flashy names and packaging if that makes sense and similar Montana asked what brand do you wish we could purchase in store in Australia I wish we could get full Besame line and wet and wild I totally agree those two yep I totally agree with you Mariah asked what is your favorite eyeshadow formula um, mattes or shimmers or both um, I think they both have a place I think you sort of need mattes to complete a shimmery look but I do love shimmer all over the lid so um, yeah, if something's got a really good shimmer, I could always make do with the mattes because I never make the mattes like my main feature. Um, but uh, shimmers 
can be spectacular or really shit. So I love shimmers. Now I'm going to work on the eyes now. I need to figure out what colors to use because I've got so many colors in this. Shit, shit, shit. All right, time to do the eyes. And I have sort of narrowed down this combination to put on my eyes. If I can add more, I will, but I doubt that I will be able to. So I've gone from orange to like burgundy to pink to dark purple to like a periwinkle sort of uh, purpley color. Um, the colors that I have otherwise, I've got a dark teal, a light teal, and a more electric blue and a black. So I don't know if I'm gonna work those in, even though these are probably my most used ones. Like the teal is my favorite one out of all of these. Um, but I feel like five is probably too much as it is, but we'll see how we go. Okay, I'm starting with the orange one, which is the shade uh, 63. Um, now I haven't used this one much because I don't actually think it looks great as a full wing on me. It's not dark enough to really define the eye um, but you can use these as like a base if you wanted to or once again mix them with other colors like I'm sort of gonna do all right the brush that I'm gonna use with this is actually by Sigma so it looks like this it's a little bit stained but it is what it is it's like a really really thin um, small angled brush so, so it's sort of like a mix between a pointed liner brush and like an angle brush but it's a lot smaller and it's great this is the E06 it's a good brush Okay, while we are doing that, uh, I had a question from Cassidy about anime. Do you watch anything aside from Full Metal? And also, do you think you'll get more tattoos, anim anime related or not? Uh, that actually reminds me, I need to send an email back to someone when I was inquiring about a tattoo. Um, so, I haven't watched anime for a while. I do, I used to love anime when I was in high school, um, and I still do love it. Uh, I'm just putting a little bit of orange there. It's going to look weird, but I feel like we can do it. Um, you know, I sort of got into anime. I think the first anime I got into watching was Neon Genesis Evangelion. And uh, I do love a lot of anime. Like, I haven't been watching stuff from the most recent couple of years. So mine are all like, the ones I love are like... I, I don't know I've got I've got a bunch you know like death note and whatever whatever now going with 65 which is one that I've been wearing a lot at the moment because it's like a burgundy um stop dropping things and all I'm doing in between these is uh just wiping off the brush on that uh towel that I've got on my lap so I'm just sort of only doing a small portion so I can try to fit in as many colors as possible um, yeah, so I do love anime and for me, it's really not so much nostalgic. It's more, um, I find them very like emotionally charged. Like I have a lot of, um, whenever I think of them or watch them, I have a lot of like feels. I get the feels, whether it's sadness or happiness or surprise, really sort of the ones that I love really resonate with me. Um, so that's sort of why I got the sleeve was because it was an anime that, like to this very day when I hear like the theme songs, like I feel like my heart skips a beat. I really, really love them, but I just don't have time these days to really watch much. Um, so yeah, I, it's like video games as well. Like I love video games. Um, but these days I find it really hard to have time to do much. So, um, I know that if there's like a series or a video game that I know is kind of addictive, I'd sort of avoid watching it or playing it because, um, I don't have time. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I love anime. Um, but I, and if I was to get another anime tattoo, I think it would be a Neon Genesis Evangelion themed one. I, that was going to be my first tattoo, but um, the tattoo artist didn't get back to me. Cheeky bastard. Oh, I'm just going in with the pink one now. This one is called, what is it called? Stop dropping things! Uh, 64. But yeah, I do have a tattoo that I uh, contacted a tattoo artist about um, only the other week and I need to, they replied back and I um, need to reply again. Uh, but it is not anime themed. Uh, but speaking of, I don't know if this classifies as anime, but Hayley, Simon and I all want to get Pokemon tattoos. That is not the thing I was contacting about. So clearly I've got a few that I want to get. Um, but the one that I was contacting uh, the tattoo artist about recently was more like a tribute to my grandmother who passed away two years ago. So I might book in that he's not available until September. So 
Won't be anytime soon, but uh, yeah, that's the plan. I feel like I might be able to work some blues in, which I'm very excited about. Okay, the next one I'm going in with is 75. This one looks very cracked because it's a super old one of mine, but it still works really well. I haven't really needed to rehydrate it with um, Duraline yet, but this is a really dark sort of plummy purple, grape purple. Got a question uh, from Brie. So she was asking what type of Shiramura products do you love the most? Um, I'm gonna say the thing that I've been using for about, oh shit, I don't know, six years now is the cleansing oil. I find their cleansing oils are the best. This is a dark one, so it can easily take over what I'm doing, so I've gotta be careful. Um, but I also love their mist. Their mists are so good. Their skincare is really good, but really expensive. Um, I'm loving their cushion foundation and I really love also their um, matte lipsticks. They look really dry and chalky when you swatch them, but they last so well. So, but my ultimate favorite thing for sure is the cleansing oil range because that's the only way I've been removing my makeup for six years now, if not more. I do delve into other cleansing oils, but I always come back to Shiramuro because Shiramuro because they're great. Um, all right, so I've got plenty of space. I'm so proud of myself. So I'm going in with number 82. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. I think they're phasing this one out maybe because I bought it on sale, which is why it's one of the most like. I bought this just before Christmas, before my low buy, <laughs> um, but this is a beautiful sort of light purpley sort of color. All right, I had a few questions about studying and like uh, what it was like to study law. Was it hard to get, what was the question? I'm digging this. So this color is not the best on its own, but to mix with others. I find these liners, oh, I got some fluff. Uh, these liners are great and they work really, really well and they're really vibrant and vivid. Um, but I find that these sort of lighter shades often don't look, they don't look like a liner on their own. See how it looks much lighter? If you wear any like complicated eyeshadows with it, it sort of gets a little bit lost. Whereas um, these darker ones do anchor the look. So if you are gonna wear these sort of lighter colors like orange or this color here, you sort of need to wear it with like virtually no color eyeshadow. So one of the questions was, I'd love to hear more about your time at uni and at and after uni. There was also a question, what made you want to be a lawyer? Uh, so there's a few like stuff like that. So there's a bunch of questions about uni and law and stuff like that. Um, I sort of stupidly sort of fell into law. Um, I was working as a sleep scientist and wanted to apply for something that I thought might be interesting um, because I sort of wanted to stop working night work. Um, and I was gonna do it part time and see how I went with it. Um, but I ended up having to sort of jump into it full time because work didn't like me studying, whatever, whatever. Um, studying law was kind of fun. Like I found that my first year I hated it. Like I didn't have many friends at my course and uh, a lot of people are really pretentious and annoying. Um, but I mainly started studying it because I liked reading about law and um, I don't know, I don't know, criminal trials and stuff like that. But you soon realize that it, that's not really what you do when you're a lawyer um, most of the time. Uh, this color is my most used one, it's teal. It is uh, 66, yeah. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, so, you know, it's very different, but I stuck with it because I I'm quite persistent and I'm quite stubborn and I stick with things. Um, and you know, look, I don't regret doing it. I, I think it's a great kind of qualification to have, but uh, I'm not super passionate about it at the moment. I, I, I don't know if I ever was, um, but I think the area that I sort of got into that I just fell into, which was more property leasing kind of stuff, uh, con contractual kind of stuff, is really boring. And um, yeah, it was really hard. It's very competitive. It's super hard getting jobs. It's super hard getting placements. It's super hard. All Everything is super hard when it comes to law, especially in Australia. There's not like, there's not many people retiring and there's a lot of like, um, that's not even focusing. There's a lot of people that aren't retiring um, and there's not enough jobs for people. So it's very, very competitive um, and it's not as glamorous and fun as you think it will be. Look, I'm no longer passionate about it, but um, 
I understand why people are. I think it's a really good area to be in. And a lot of people go into it being like, I'm going to change the world. And then they are a bit surprised when they kind of go, no, I'm just filling out forms and reading contracts and it's kind of shit. Okay, we made it to the last one besides the black. This is uh, 87, which is a bright teal. This is a newish one for me too. So I'm just going to cap it off there with that. Um, oh, it's a rainbow. I've done it, guys. Is it hard to have two YouTube channels and also a part-time lawyer? Yes, it is hard. Um, to be 100% frank with you guys, uh, in the last two weeks, my position at the law firm has sort of, I've sort of been made redundant. So um, this week and last week, I actually haven't had work to go to. Um, I'm going to be there as like a reserve for, um, this is that color, this is that color, um, reserve for when people go on leave and whatnot and they need extra help. But um, I was sort of lucky that I got a position as uh, helping out while someone was on maternity leave. Uh, that didn't really add much. You can't really see the difference. It's just a little bit brighter than that last one. Um, and that has sort of run its course. So I currently am not juggling both. So yeah, I don't really know where this year is going to take me, but um, we'll see by the end of the year if I need to apply for a new job or not. I've sort of squirreled away a little bit of money for this very situation because I knew it was coming. Um, but yeah, when you're working and you've got YouTube, it's very, very hard. And I think it just comes down to motivation. So, uh, for example, if you, I don't know, if, if you're passionate about what you do, you're happy to come home and do it every night. Like I used to film every weekend. I used to edit pretty much every night of the week after dinner until like 11 o'clock midnight, 1am and then go to work the next day. Um, and it didn't, it wasn't, look, it was tiring and it was a lot of work, but at the same time, I really enjoyed doing this as a hobby. So the fact that it's sort of taken on to be like enough as a part-time job, not quite a full-time job, but enough as a part-time job, um, it's, it's nice that that has come out of it, but it does require a lot of commitment and most people just don't make it in the industry because they don't have the drive to do that. And you really do need to pretty much work, like work um, every day, like seven days a week for years uh, to actually make something out of a creative field. It's very, very hard to do. So that is the liner. I'm gonna zoom out and do my lashes, but you can see, I don't know what color to put on uh, should I mimic that on here? Oh my god, what a thought. I should have done that as I was going. I'm gonna do it quickly. <laughs> Jared Maples, you funny bugger. Um, who was your first boyfriend? Um, not gonna name names, uh, but uh, he's not my current boyfriend, that's for sure. Um, I'm just gonna put the same colors sort of on the waterline. These do stay really well on the waterline, so you sort of can do this. Most other colors will sort of mix together, but I find that these are pretty good. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, do you prefer filming for your personal channel more, or do you prefer beauty news? So let's talk about this while I do this this stuff. Um, I much prefer to film for beauty news. Um, it's just more fun. I, I, like, I like filming for this channel, um, but the problem is that because I'm sort of just accountable uh, for it on my own, uh, you really do need to, I don't know, you've got to come up with ideas yourself. I always sort of film this kind of stuff around the other stuff that I need to do, like the way it used to be when I was working more. Um, and once again, I don't know if I'm going to have to get another job soon, but we'll see. We'll play that by ear. Um, but what I used to do was um, find out what days I'm working. And then I used to organize Beauty News filming around that and then uh, Beauty News editing around that. Then socializing and my own channel filming and editing all around that. So it was like always like the last resort for me. And I try not to take it too seriously because if I take it too seriously, it just feels like I'm working all the time. Whereas I sort of see my channel as being still my hobby. Um, so, you know, I, I actually prefer to film with Hayley because... Um, it's fun filming with someone that you get along with. It's sort of like you're just sitting down chatting to a friend, but there's a camera there. So I quite enjoy filming Beauty News, um, but they both have their benefits. Like Beauty News, there's like, 
you know it takes longer we talk a, like we talk a lot editing takes a lot longer um, this thing is actually taking quite a long time it's similar to a beauty news filming day so yeah I guess there's a little bit more pressure when it comes to beauty news but at the same time um, I have more fun with it like it's a lot more work a lot more research a lot more planning um, but the actual filming is a lot more fun so whereas these sort of get ready with me is I can sit here for two hours and I'm just like Shit, I've been talking to myself for two hours. What I should have done some laundry instead. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. But I like this channel as well because um, I don't feel much pressure. Like, everyone that sort of watches my channel are generally really, really nice people. Uh, people don't come across uh, my channel as much as they come across Beauty News randomly and leave me, like, abusive comments and whatnot. So, um, I, yeah, I, there's a, I love having this as an outlet and just as a way to play with makeup um, and create content. Uh, that's not so there's like a schedule with beauty news and it's just like you do the same thing each week but it's slightly different so um, this is a bit more fun to just you know do what I want to do do a wear test do a whatever um, do a get ready with me have a bit of a chat and not feel the pressure that I we sometimes feel with beauty news because um, yeah it just just by the nature of it being viewed by a lot more people you feel a lot more pressure to either get things right or be a bit more pedantic and more of a perfect perfectionist about things whereas on this channel I'm like I've got stuff in my head deal with it so it's a little bit more relaxed and, and um, not much pressure but not as fun beauty news is more fun but more pressure so all right so I wasn't expecting to do it on the waterline but I did and I don't hate it you can definitely see that these liners do sort of last like they they stick well to the waterline so if you did want to put a color in the waterline and a different color on um, like your wings you can do that without it like transferring too much it's very very good I'm gonna put some mascara and lashes on now to complete my rainbow okay Melissa Jane asked what music do you listen to and what shows do you like so I'll talk about that while I'm putting on this mascara um, I am pretty shit with music I listen to music that I loved in like high school and sort of like my heydays not quite but uh, I listen to the radio a lot but I'm not like dedicated into knowing what these particular bands and stuff like their names are and whatnot oh, got some mascara on there that's classy um, so I love listening to yeah things that I listen to like the early 2000s and stuff like that I just find that really fun like we were sitting around the other night eating dumplings with Simon and uh, a couple of Darren's friends uh, who are also my friends um, and we were listening to things like what were we were listening to like Sun Colodo and Silverchair and Something for Kate and Grinspoon and stuff like that like you know old school sort of um, that was sort of like my era where I was going out a lot seeing gigs and having a lot of fun so uh, yeah we love listening to that kind of stuff I also love listening to some boy bands and pop music um, one of my favorite songs to listen to to get pumped up is uh, uh, Jackie by Joanne that is a fantastic song if you didn't like that when you're younger neither did I but if you play it really loud now it is really fun so yeah kind of fun songs or sort of like uh, yeah sort of alternative songs from the early 2000s I really like uh, but I also listen to yeah current songs on the radio I just don't actively like buy the albums and care too much I just listen to what's new on the radio um, but with TV shows I'm watching Westworld I really love um, Simon got me into the TV show Younger so that's sort of rolling out season five or six or whatever it is um, can't wait for Game of Thrones so I like more kind of um, I don't know fantasy kind of stuff drink my coffee but then, then at the same time I sort of like watching sort of trashy things to uh, wind down sometimes so um, I love watching things like I really liked Millionaire Matchmaker and like Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares and stuff those things are really fun I like those as well okay I have some model rock lashes that I've cut in half I use these all the time this is the model rock glue in the dark in the black version uh, looks blue but it's black there was also a question about um, I'm going to America or would I like to go to America what would I like to see um, I would love to go to America I think um, I'm sort of at the stage where any excuse I'd love to go um, but because I am not working so much at the moment 
Um, I need to be a bit more careful with uh, the money I spend. So, you know, one day if a brand was like, do you want to come to the US, we'll pay for your flights, I'll be like, um, yeah, we'll be there. I've always wanted to go to New York and then like hire a car and drive down to New Orleans. I thought that would be like a really cool trip. So that's something I'd love to do. But once again, these kind of trips are very expensive, especially from Australia. Um, so uh, I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon. But that is the look with the liners. There we can see it. Ooh la la, ooh la la. All right, that's zoomed out and it doesn't look as like impactful zoomed out, which is annoying, but it is what it is. Um, a few people have asked about my low buy and how it's going. And um, I'm gonna say in the last month or so, I've been a bit naughty. Uh, firstly, Mecca had cool releases. I bought a couple of stuff. Um, and also I was in a store, I was in Gorman uh, with my friend and then the shop assistant had a gorgeous like orange lip on and I was like, what is that? And she said, oh, I got it from Japan. But then I found out when I got back that it's in Maya. And I'm like, what is it? And she goes, Tony Moly, they've got really cool lip stains. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to check it out. Um, I don't know if I got the shade that she got, but um, <laughs> I got a few of them. So I originally got this orangey red, uh, which I really like. And then I liked it so much. If you saw my Instagram stories, this wore like until the next morning. I, ha I woke up with a bright like lip on. So I loved it so much that I went back and got the true red. I got um, the pink and I also got a velvet version. So these have more of a shine. This is more of a velvet. Um, and I was actually gonna do, instead of filming this, I was going to do a wear test of one of these. Um, but then I decided I'm going to the city tomorrow and there's one other one in this range. So I may as well blow my low buy even further and uh, buy the full set so at least I can sort of do a review on the full set. So I might actually wear one of these since it was the thing that broke my low buy. Um, but those stains last forever. This one still lasts a long time. It doesn't last as much, but this has like a matte finish. It's like a nail polish bottle. This has a matte finish, like a velvet finish, um, and it is gorgeous. Uh, so this is sort of like a red li liquid lipstick, those matte liquid lipsticks, but this lasts so well. So here's a color. I'm not going to swatch these on my hand because I find that whenever I do, I've got like stained hands for two days. So that is gorgeous. So it's still sort of drying down. Um, it's got a bit of a sheet. It still looks like a satin, but it would dry down to like a, a, a true matte. This shade is 05. So it's sort of like the orangey red. I know you can get more oranges. I know you can get more pinks with this. Um, this one has more shades than um, these guys that are more intense. But like I said, they've got a shine finish um, rather than a matte finish, but these are like intense mofos. They will last on your lips guaranteed probably 12 hours minimum they are so good and when i do do a lips uh, wear test with them i have to start super early in the morning or go to the very next day because they're going to last that long but this is a nice matte finish so i would actually prefer to buy a bunch of these than buying liquid lipsticks because these don't feel dry and powdery these just sort of wear down to like a really bold stain so uh, yeah that's what i sort of broke my low buy on but I'm continuing to do it because they are so good. And I have to say that like, even though there's some really nice lip products and makeup products that I've come across recently, like um, probably the other lipstick that stood out as being like my favorite lipstick of the year is the Shuramura one that's in like Yaz Red, which is a beautiful, like intense, corally, vibrant, neon red color, which is gorgeous. Even though I love that and the color is phenomenal, I haven't come across a formula of lip product that has impressed me as much as these guys have in the last forever. I don't know, like rarely do I come across um, a lip product or a product in general that I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God. And these are definitely oh my God worthy. So you can now buy them at Maya, which is really great. And I bought all these 25% off. I think the sale's still on. So I'm going to go back, get the orange one of these, which I sort of avoided originally because it's very orange and I know it make my teeth yellow, but I might pick up another one of these as well. So um, yeah, very, very good. I'm going to pick up this one for my mum if it's in store because I know that she 
uh, likes a long wear lip product and an orangey red, but yeah, they're phenomenal. So um, someone also asked what makeup inspires me the most. I would say for me, probably a beautiful lip um, because I just love a bold lip. Um, and if a color really, um, inspires me or a formula really inspires me i think it really lifts like a look and you can do a really simple look with a really bold lip and i think it's really modern and beautiful so probably a lip inspires me the most followed by a cool eyeshadow eyeshadows are gorgeous and they inspire me too um, but that is a look that i've sort of created i don't know if there's any more questions i need to ask answer not ask um what's my favorite pr to receive um Will you share what you blew your low buy on? Yeah, these lip stains, I blew my low buy on. Um, but uh, favorite PR is probably stuff that is from brands that I personally use. Like for example, I was sent this nail polish from Kester Black, which I've been using Kester Black nail polishes for like the past five years. So when I was getting some Kester Black, I'm like, that's super exciting because I use it anyway so um sort of the stuff that i use anyway sure mira recently started sending me stuff which is great because i've been using their products for years so the fact that i can try something like a new cushion foundation that normally i would be a bit reluctant to buy um because i'm not really into cushion foundations if they go do you want to try it i'm like sure i'll try it and then i'm like i love it um dermalogic is another one of those brands i've used a few of their products in the past and i recently received a few things and i love them all Glasshouse candles. We've been getting glasshouse candles from Beauty for Beauty News, and they're fantastic. They're so good. So it's mainly the PR that I've been using for like the products that I've been using for a very long time. But now all of a sudden I'm getting the new releases without having to go out and buy them and spend all my money that I don't have. So um, yeah, they're the kind of things that really excite me. The stuff that I would would buy with my own money and have bought with my own money um when you just get a random bunch of stuff that you're like i wouldn't actually buy this anyway um i'm less inclined to accept the pr use the pr even promote the pr because it's stuff that i if i don't if i don't want to use it personally or i wouldn't buy it personally I wouldn't recommend it to you guys. So um, yeah, there's been a couple of things thanks to Beauty News and the exposure we get from Beauty News that has put us on some PR lists. And um, yeah, there's some really cool stuff that I've been using for nearly, sometimes some of them nearly a decade. And it's really nice just them being like, here's the new candle. And I'm like, thank you. I've been using those candles for, oh, God knows how long, six years, seven years. And now all of a sudden, I get occasional presents. So yeah, those are my favorite PRs to get for sure. Um, I'm gonna end this look with, um, speaking of Shiramira, uh, if you saw my favorites, uh, you will see that I am obsessed with this. Uh, this is called the Skin Perfecto Makeup Refresher Mist and it's in the Sakura one. So it's the pink one, which is like cherry blossoms. I make everyone. Simon came over, I'm like, do you want some? I chased Darren around the house. I'm like, do you want some? It's just like, it's such a fine mist. I'm like, is it even spraying? I just feel this little like, oh, it smells so good. It sort of smells like, it's like cherry fruit and a bit sweet and oh God, it's so good. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, that is my chatty get ready with me. Um, I'm just about to film a review of these eyeliners. So um, that will probably be up next. Um, but thank you to everyone that left questions. Um, I hope I answered them. I tried to answer as much as possible. Um, this will be very long, but it is what it is. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.